Harvard football squad on September 1st, only the players themselves dreamed that 1966 would be a season to remember. The experts said that Harvard might finish in the Ivy League second division, might in fact suffer its first losing season since 1958. But the players went to work to make their dreams come true. The end result was Harvard's most exciting season in years. An 8-1 record, the best since 1920, as the highlights unfold. On September 24th, Lafayette invaded the stadium to open the Harvard football season, and the game figured to be a toss-up. In winning 30-7, the Crimson displayed a powerful attack which surprised nearly everyone. Harvard's first touchdown is set up in the first period as middle guard Stan Greenwich recovers a fumble at the Lafayette 29. On first down, quarterback Rick Zimmerman hits right end Carter Lord for a 29-yard touchdown, and after Maury delays conversion, Harvard leads 7-0. Lafayette comes right back to tie the score. Here, quarterback Jim Marshall picks up 15 yards to the Crimson 23. Four plays later, Marshall scores on a quarterback sneak, and the first quarter ends in a 7-7 tie. Midway through the second period, Harvard travels 71 yards in seven plays for its second touchdown. Senior halfback Bobby Leo opens the drive with a beautiful 18-yard run, and the senior speedster nearly gets away. On the next play, sophomore Vic Gatto maneuvers with the finesse of a varsity veteran as he races 53 yards into the leopard end zone. But a clipping penalty sets the ball back to the Lafayette 24. On first down, senior fullback Tom Choquette lunges down to the Leopard 12. Three plays later, Choquette powers in from the one, and the half ends with Harvard leading 14 to seven. In the third period, the Harvard running attack begins to move again. Quarterback Zimmerman sneaks for four yards. Halfback Gatto gets the call and shakes off tacklers for a 25-yard gain to the Lafayette 27. From the 20, it's fullback Choquette, moving for a first down at the 8-yard line. And then Gatto scores from the 3. Harvard adds 10 more points on a field goal by Maury DeLay and a pass from John Chevlin to Will Stargill and Harvard has victory number one. A driving rainstorm made the stadium a muddy quagmire as neighboring Tufts came to Cambridge with hopes of pulling a big upset. Despite sloppy conditions, Harvard kept its offense in gear and won 45 to nothing. The Crimson took the opening kickoff and traveled 67 yards in 11 plays. Here fullback Choquette picks up 10 yards. Zimmerman hits junior and Joe Cook for nine. Bobby Leo gains 13 yards with some nifty second effort. On the next play, Leo scores and Harvard leads 6-0. The Crimson rugged defense goes to work. Stan Greenwich and linebackers Chafaro and Donlin stop Larry Small. Captain Hughes joins Donlin and Chafaro on this play. After a fumble recovery at the Tufts 4, fullback Choquette scores from the 1, and the first period ends with Harvard leading 12 to nothing. In the third period, Bobby Leo records the top offensive play of this wet afternoon as he races 41 yards for his third touchdown of the day, and Harvard goes on to win 45 to nothing. Eager to begin Ivy competition, the Crimson journeyed to Columbia's Baker Field to take on the Lions. A homecoming crowd saw Columbia score first, but Harvard came roaring back to win 34-7. Halfback Chet Stewart sets up the Lions' first score as he picks off Rick Zimmerman's pass and races 40 yards to the Harvard 25. Five plays later, fullback Arnie Jensen scores from the three, and Columbia leads 7-0. Following the Lion kickoff, Zimmerman comes right back with a pass. He spots Angel Cook for a 56-yard touchdown. 
The placement attempt fails, however, and the first period ends with Columbia on top, 7-6. Early in the second period, quarterback Zimmerman picks up 19 yards and thus begins a scoring drive which covers 92 yards. A Zimmerman pass gains 29 yards as N. Carter Lord makes a diving catch at the Columbia 30-yard line. Zimmerman pitches to Leo and Bobby gets 10. Behind the blocking of Joe O'Donnell and Bob Flanagan, Zimmerman scores from the six, and Harvard leads 13 to seven. In the third quarter, linebacker Matt Donlin passes on this Columbia fumble at the line 47. On third down, quarterback Zimmerman hits Bobby Leo over the middle for a 34-yard gain to the line 11. Five plays later, Tom Choquette gets the touchdown from one yard out. In the fourth period, Harvard is moving again. Fullback Tom Choquette fights off tacklers for a 14-yard gain to the Columbia 23. Zimmerman fires a strike to Carter Lord, who gets to the eight-yard line. Once again, fullback Choquette finds a big hole off right guard and scores. Halfback Marsh Goldberg scores Harvard's final touchdown, and the Crimson wins its third straight 34-7. After Harvard's third straight victory, only the Crimson and powerful Cornell remained unbeaten among major Eastern College 11s. A crowd of 23,000 eagerly awaited the kickoff at the stadium. And when it was over, Harvard was still undefeated, winning 21-0. Cornell threatens early in the first period with this apparent touchdown pass from quarterback Bill Abel to Ron Gervasi, but it's nullified by a holding penalty. Immediately, a charged-up Crimson defense begins to pressure quarterback Abel as tackle Dave Davis does on this play. Early in the second period, Harvard safety man John Tyson picks off a Bill Abel pass and returns it to the nine. After a 15-yard clipping penalty, quarterback Zimmerman fires a perfect strike to win Carter Lord for the Crimson's first touchdown, and Harvard leads at halftime 7-0. Early in the second half, halfback Vic Ghetto behind the blocking of Joe O'Donnell and Al Burson gave for 61 yards for Harvard's second touchdown. Jim Babcock converts, and Harvard leads 14-0. The Crimson defense playing its best game of the year stops the boarded Cordell ground attack. Linebacker Matt Donlin throws wingback Ed Zach for a loss. Fullback Pete Larson is stopped by Chaparro, Donlin, and cornerback Bill Cobb. Taking the ball after a Cornell punt, Bobby Leo gets the call and picks up eight yards. Quarterback Zimmerman shows that he can run two as he collects 11 yards and a first down at the Cornell 22. And Rick climaxes the 66-yard drive with this three-yard scoring toss to Joe Cook. And Harvard has a most impressive 21-0 victory. When the defending Eastern and Ivy champion Dartmouth Indians invaded Cambridge, Harvard once again found itself involved in the top Eastern College game of the day. A sellout crowd of 40,000, plus many more who saw the game on regional television, were treated to a classic thriller. Dartmouth takes the opening kickoff and begins to move as Jim Metter rambles for 21 yards to midfield. A crushing tackle by John Tyson forces this Pete Walton fumble, and it's recovered by N. Bob Hoffman at the Harvard 24. Three plays later, it's off to the races as Bobby Leo electrifies the crowd with a 64-yard scoring run, and Harvard goes out in front 7-0. The 
second period finds Dartmouth on the move. Quarterback Mickey Beard hits in Bob McLeod at the Harvard 21. Beard then eludes four tacklers as he somersaults into the end zone after a nine-yard run, and the game is tied at 7-7. Harvard misses a chance to take the lead just before the half when this pass from Leo to Rick Zimmerman misses connections. Dartmouth goes ahead 14-7 midway through the third period as Gene Reisowitz caps a 51-yard drive with this one-yard punt. Dartmouth is on the move again, but sophomore linebacker John Emery forces a Mickey Bird fumble, and John Tyson recovers at the Harvard 46. Rick Zimmerman passes to Bobby Leo, and interference is called on Dartmouth, giving Harvard a first down at the Indians' 48-yard line. Bobby Leo shows his versatility by passing to Carter Lord, who fights his way to the Dartmouth 22. And the third quarter ends with Harvard trailing 14-7. On the fourth play of the final period, Joe Cooks makes this clutch catch of Zimmerman's 10-yard pass, and the score is 14-13. After a penalty, it put the ball at the one-and-a-half-yard line, an attempted two-point conversion fails, and the Crimson still trails. With 9.29 remaining in the game, the Crimson moves from its own 20. Tom Choquette rips off a game to the Harvard 37. Harvard moves into Dartmouth territory on this 11-yard pass from Zimmerman to Gatto. Watch this near interception as Joe Cook makes another key grab at the Dartmouth 35. Once again, Zimmerman hits Cook, this time at the Indian 5. Three plays later, Zimmerman scores, and Tom Choquette, number 30, symbolizes the delirious joy of this Harvard team. But it's not over yet. With 1.41 to play, Bob Lundquist takes the kickoff. He hands off to Gene Razowitz, and Gene fires a perfect pass back to Lundquist, who appears headed for Pater. The sophomore Tommy Wynn saves the day with a sure tackle at the Dartmouth 42. The Harvard defense holds, and the Crimson remains unbeaten by taking in the Ivy and Eastern Champion Indians, 1914. With Harvard riding a five-game win streak, the Quakers of Pennsylvania come to the stadium hoping to pull the upset of the year. Then quarterback Bill Creighton finds the going rough early in the game as his first pass is intercepted by junior quarterback Bill Cobb, who makes a fine 13-yard return to Penn's 33-yard line. Nine plays later, Tom Choquette scores from one yard out. Jim Babcock converts, and Harvard has a 7-0 lead. Midway through the second period, Creedon begins to find the range as he hits wingback Ben Bissett for a 20-yard gain. Seven plays later, Creedon again finds Bissett with his 12-yard scoring pass, and it's the only touchdown of the entire season scored through the year against Harvard. With the scores tied 7-7, Harvard begins to roll. Bobby Leo sweeps right for a first down at the Harvard 38. Once again, it's Leo faking a halfback pass and turning on some fancy footwork. Bob gets into Penn territory with a nifty 15-yard gain. Vic Gatto sweeps left for a six-yard advance to the Penn 13. After faking the show catch, Zimmerman pitches the ball to Bobby Leo, who falls on it in the end zone for Harvard's second touchdown, giving the Crimson a 14-7 halftime advantage. With four minutes going in the third period, Don Chafaro blocks a Quaker quick kick, and Justin Hughes recovers at the Penn 27. Harvard scores in seven plays, with quarterback Zimmerman sneaking in from the one. On the following kickoff, Ken Dunn fumbles, and Mike Ananis recovers at the Penn 25. On the first play from scrimmage, quarterback Zimmerman pitches to Leo, who hands the ball back to the quarterback, and Rick hits Joe Cook with a 25-yard scoring pass, and Harvard wraps up its sixth straight victory, 27-7. In search of its seventh straight victory, Harvard travels to Princeton to inaugurate victory competition. The steadily improving Tigers were sky high for this game, and Princeton won this bitter struggle, 18-14. Princeton scores first as Ted Garcia kicks a 23-yard field goal with four minutes gone in the second period. 
Six minutes later, Harvard caps a 74-yard drive as Bobby Leo falls on a fumble in the Tiger end zone. Jim Babcock's conversion makes it 7-3 Harvard at halftime. After taking the second half kickoff, Harvard marches 64 yards in seven plays. Quarterback Zimmerman hits Carter Lord at the Princeton 31. Moments later, Bobby Leo scores his second touchdown of the day with a six-yard run, and Harvard leads 14-3. After the Crimson kickoff, tackle Dave Davis forces a Princeton fumble and Don Chaparro recovers at the Tiger 24. Jim Kukoski makes the play of the game for Princeton as he picks off a Zimmerman pass and returns it to the Harvard 48. And now Princeton begins to move as fullback Dave Martin hits in Pete Zeitz off at the Harvard 23. Martin goes to the air again as Steve Pierce makes a fine catch at the Harvard three-yard line. The big fullback leaps across for the touchdown with three and a half minutes remaining in the third period. The Tigers make their two-point conversion and the final period begins with Harvard leading 14-11. Early in the final period, the Tigers begin a 17-play scoring march which covers 93 yards. Tailback Bracken passes to win Steve Pierce for a sizable gain to the Princeton 46. Six plays later, Bracken bursts off tackle for an 18-yard pickup to the Crimson 14-yard line. Moments later, Dave Martin scores from the one. Garcia converts, and Princeton leads 18-14 with 8.42 to play. And Bobby Leo takes the following kickoff and nearly breaks away for a touchdown. Leo then makes a sensational catch of this Zimmerman fourth down pass at the Princeton 38-yard line. From the Princeton 33, fullback Tom Chilquette picks up seven yards on the draw play. With fourth down and a yard to go, the Tigers hold as Harvard misses the first down by inches. Princeton runs out the clock, and Harvard suffers its first defeat, 18-14. Hoping to rebound from the Princeton setback, Harvard entertained the pesky Brown Bears, who always seemed to play one of their finest games of the year against Harvard. Well, this rainy afternoon was no exception, as Brown scored first, but finally succumbed 24-7. to In the first period, linebacker Tom Whitten recovers a fumble at the Harvard 28-yard line. Five plays later, Brown sophomore quarterback Jack McMahon fakes beautifully and bootlegs for the game's first touchdown, and Brown leads 7-0. Zimmerman gets the Crimson moving after the kickoff with his 13-yard pass to Carter Lord at the Brown 30-yard line. From the 20, Vic Gatto fights his way down to the Brown 7. Three plays later, Gatto goes into the end zone and the first period ends in a 7-7 tie. Early in the second quarter, Zimmerman hits Leo with a screen pass, and Bobby picks up 18 yards to the Browns' 27. Using the same pitch-out reverse play that worked against Penn, quarterback Zimmerman hits in Maury DeLay, who makes a fine grab for Harvard's second touchdown, and the Crimson leads at halftime 17-7. In the third quarter, tackle Dave Davis recovers a fumble at the Brown 21. Quarterback Rick Zimmerman gets 16 yards with this run. And then it's fullback Choquette in for the game's final score as Harvard wins its seventh, 24 to seven, and stays in a tie for first place in the Ivy, first place in the Ivy League race. It's the game as a crowd of over 41,000 jammed soldiers failed to see if Yale could spoil Harvard's bid for a share of the Ivy title. Harvard scored its seventh win against Yale in 10 games under coach John Yavison, 17 to nothing, as the Crimson defense stole the spotlight. Tackle Dave Davis throws Yale halfback Chris Cool for a three-yard loss in a typical play. Once again, Cool finds the going rough as Bill Cobb and Don Chaparro combined for this game tackle. Yale had only five first downs. On Yale's first play from scrimmage, quarterback Pete Doherty is intercepted as quarterback Buzz Baker makes this fine play and returns the ball to the Yale 45.
Dom Chilquette, moving for eight yards on this play, did most of the early damage for Harvard. It's Chilquette again, this time powering ahead to the Yale 34 first down. Well, Harvard is forced to give up the ball, however, and Eli halfback Jim Fisher scoots 20 yards to the Yale 41. With fourth and one, Yale fails to make the first down as fullback Don Barrows is stopped by Bob Hoffman and Vic Gatto in to receive a possible punt. Harvard gets a big break as Jim Game punched to the Yale 28 where an Eli defender touches the ball and Carter Lord recovers. An inside reverse to halfback Vic Gatto picks up 12 yards. But the Yale defense stiffens and Mickey Krinsky holds for senior Jim Babcock who boots a field goal from the 19 to put Harvard ahead 3 to nothing. Almost at once, the Harvard defense gets the ball back as John Emery crashes into halfback Jim Fisher and Buzz Baker recovers the fumble at the Yale 27. Seven plays later, Bobby Leo scores and makes it three years in a row that he has crossed the Yale goal line. Babcock converts in the first half ends with a score of Harvard 10, Yale nothing. In the third period, Harvard begins another drive. Zimmerman hits Bobby Leo with his 10-yard hook pass. Rick clicks once more on this hook pattern, but Joe Cook is hit hard, and he fumbles the ball at the Yale 26, where Ed Franklin recovers. Takeover at the two. Yale is forced to punt, and on the first play from scrimmage, senior Bobby Leo puts the game on ice with this typical run covering 52 yards. It was Bobby's fourth varsity touchdown against Yale, making him the third Crimson back in history to reach that total. great season fashioned by a fine team with excellent coaching. This was the best Harvard team I've had, John Yavison said at the end of the Yale game, and now you know why he felt that way. Well, this is Jerry Capstein saying so long for now. See you next year with more Harvard football highlights. <laughs>